Hey, so we're <laughs> recording. I'm I am here with Mr. Frank Ring. Make Frank is an accomplished walker and author and a parent and a professional. He has a job outside of this, has a, a podcast, best selling how many books on Amazon? Right now it's four books and working on number five. And so they're pretty much all in one subject. So I'm going to say this almost makes you the walk king. Um, walk king. Frank Ring, the walk king. I might have yeah, to, I might have to use that. <laughs> I'm surprised no one suggested it because I was doing a thumbnail for this video and I'm like, right. Frank Ring, the Walk King. I'm like, that this is be, like, that would be <laughs> very nice. I like that. It writes itself. Yes. So here on the AFib show and my Ticker Talks podcast, I've like been pushing walking on people mm -hmm. as the number one treatment for, well, not just for AFib, but for blood pressure. For, um, you know, especially if you have secondary conditions like me, I had asthma, had high blood pressure, I had AFib, I was on beta blockers that made me feel terrible and made me feel too tired to exercise. So, yet I had walking. So, tell me why I was right. You're right because the subtitle of my first book is Walking for Health and Fitness. The subtitle is The Easiest Way to Get in Shape and Stay in Shape. And your reason you're right is because it it's so easy and gentle on the body when you're doing it, but it's so beneficial to the body. Uh, right. Uh, improved circulation. Uh, you're out there moving, so you know as far as the asthma, you're you're opening up your lungs a little bit more, um, and it, and that movement it just um, really helps the brain, helps your mindset. Um, there's so many things because when you're not feeling well, as you know with what you went through. I mean, I got into this through a back injury. I was depressed during that time in my life. It was awful that I was in my early 50s. And I mean, I had a, I had a rough, I was actually out of work for four months. So that's how I got into walking. So the, um, the mindset part of it was the first thing I noticed once I started walking. And then almost the secondary was the fact that, hey, I, I treated my back pain and now I'm walking and I feel good physically, but emotionally everything just opened up like i was much clearer in my thinking and my outlook on life but because during those during those months of of being in pain it was awful i was really not in a good place so how physically active were you prior to your back injury okay i was a runner um i was a runner in high school uh besides being a baseball player and then through the years i would run just to to you know let me get out there get in shape a little bit I'm a, a high school teacher. I became a teacher at 35 years old. The next year, I got asked to be an assistant cross-country coach. So now I'm coaching runners. So I'm like, oh, let me get back in shape myself and consistently run. So I started doing that. So I'll tell you how much of a runner I am. I did a virtual run from where I teach in Palisades Park, New Jersey. And the idea was to run to Key West, Florida. Uh, and yeah. map, it along, map it along Route 1. And now this is pre-Google Earth. So I actually got physical map. I Photoshop in my one of my courses. So I would Photoshop myself into pictures along the route. And oh, I see. And I'd yeah. goof on my students, and they would look at these maps and like they're like, "What are you doing?" And the sign that I put up clearly said "virtual run," yet they would believe me when I say I'm running to Florida. Right. <laughs> so it was a way to have fun. So that's how much I ran. I finally, eventually, made it to Florida. And then actually went all around the United States. It was about a, I don't know, over 11,000 miles. But the last half of that was walking because of how many times I was injured while I was a runner. Right. So I ran to stay in shape, but it, I was hurt all the time staying in shape. It was crazy. And I never noticed it. Well, I just thought, oh, I'm hurt again. My knee's sore. My calf is sore. I could never run a marathon because anytime I increased my mileage, I got hurt. And yeah. um, so once I I hurt my back, I had a, um, a herniated disc, partly from running, partly from not lifting properly, partly not warming up, not stretching afterwards, like just doing everything wrong because my life was so busy. I had a young son uh, working, come, trying to get in workouts, coaching, and then I finished running. I'd come home. I'd sit on the couch, not support my back, and then it just it snowballed. A little bit of soreness, got worse, 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 worse. Physical therapy didn't help. Finally, I had some epidurals. My dot, my, I went to an orthopedic doctor finally, and 
you know, he just looked at me and he's like, you know, you got to stop everything. I don't want to have to operate on you. You know, when he's looking at the, uh, the MRI and he's going, Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. and I'm going, no, I, I don't want your patient doesn't want to hear that. He goes, it's, it's bad. So let's stop everything. Pain management. And then when I stopped pain management, um, I was afraid to do anything. So I got back to school. I was out of work for four months. I got back to teaching and coaching. I mean, I didn't even like at the races, I wouldn't even run from one spot to another with the, I would start the kids and I'd walk to the finish line and see them come in. Cause I was so afraid of getting hurt again. Right. So I said, I can't do nothing. So I said, well, let me get out and walk a little bit just to get stronger with the idea of, Hey, I'll start walking. I'll start to feel better. And then I'll run. And right. when I started walking to stay in shape or to get in shape, which I'd never, I never walked to get in shape. I was always running or doing something else. I realized the first thing was, wow, this is really nice. My head was clearer. I was able to listen to audio books, podcasts, music, or just nothing and just walk. I'm like, wow, this is really, there's something to this that I never saw before or I never thought of before. And just getting out every day. And I'd go a little bit further, a little bit further. Um, I know one of my blog posts I talk about one of the benefits of walking is the time to listen to audiobooks. And I found myself like, all right, let me walk more because I want to get to the next chapter of the book. So, right. you know, it was, it was things like that, that once I saw the effect of how I felt physically walking, but also how I felt mentally walking, I was like, I am never running again. So I've not been hurt walking. Uh, the only time I got hurt, I rolled my ankle because I stepped in a pile of leaves, which was stupid instead of going around it. Other than that, I've been healthy and uh, I feel feel great. My weight has pretty much stayed within five pounds over the past. It's got to be six years now. That's great. Yes, yeah, so I just come. I've just come back from uh, Italy and Switzerland. Nice. And I walked five and a half miles a day, according to my watch. Right. Beautiful. I ate, I ate massive amounts of Italian and Swiss <laughs> food, and I actually was weight stable the whole trip. I was actually. I thought. There's no way I'm walking off everything I'm eating right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I came back a pound lighter than when I left. Wow. Wonderful. So, yeah. I mean, and I, I'm in Italy, right? I, there's no dieting these two weeks. I'm in Italy. <laughs> yeah. It's mental and healthy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to give the impression, yeah, you can just go walk and eat anything you want because I don't think it's sustainable. But, right. I mean, I think people seriously underestimate um, with doing something like, you know, once you get used to it, like if walking, let's say five miles a day can have a dramatic impact on your health, like dramatic amounts and, and the type of, correct me if I'm wrong as a runner, but I've found that it's running five miles a day and walking five miles a day can almost get you to the same place for your cardiorespiratory health. Like, you know, or let's say mm -hmm. jogging five miles a day. Yeah, can almost get you to the same place. I, I, I think so. I agree with that. And I agree. <clears throat> I, I think I found walking even better because I would run five miles at a time. Right. And what I found when I ran five miles at a time is I just wanted the run to end because it running is so hard on the body. Now, I, I've never been overweight. I've always maintained my weight. But even with being what I thought was in shape, I just could not wait for that run tan. I was out here doing it. There was the occasion where, oh, wow, everything is going great. I feel good. That was the exception. When I'm out walking five miles, I don't, it's, that's the rule that I get out there and feel great. I've never had a bad walk. And a lot of it is really the mindset. When I was running, with all that huffing and puffing, it couldn't listen other than music okay which you get tired of i couldn't listen to podcasts i couldn't listen to audiobooks i couldn't even listen to the voice in my head and i have a lot of i have a good voice in my head but the running and huffing and puffing wouldn't let me do that so that all that time was almost like wasted mentally yeah. where walking i i used the time of my one last podcast was things to do while walking there's so many things you can do and really come away feeling like rejuvenated that's um, really actually. I just listen. I'm going to put the link in the show notes to your right. latest podcast because I I took a walk from work. I'm like, work's bullshit today, so I just went out <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I got to talk to this Frank guy tomorrow night, so I I may as well listen to his episode. And I was actually first of all, I thought, wow, he's got a great voice. He's in the right business, 
And then I listened to the podcast and I thought there's some quality information here. Yeah. And um, it got me so motivated that when I got back, I subscribed to Udemy and downloaded some courses. And I'm like, now I now I'm going to actually finally learn the proper way to video edit because I've been winging it all this time. Okay. And just go on my treadmill and walk. So now since then, I've spent an hour and a half on my treadmill learning my video editing software much better and getting my walk in so yeah so you've already inspired something in this house that, that so. that's if i do if i inspire one person every day that's yeah you that's you've great hit your quota you hit <laughs> quota hit, hit my, i'm big enough for two people so you're, yeah. you can count it twice all right so i'm good for tomorrow also <laughs> <laughs> you're off to a great start <laughs> frankly you know um you know a lot of my viewers are older most of my audience mm-hmm. is over 60 OK, um, I hear a lot of them. They start from like a, a, a place of I mean, they've gotten AFib after years of high blood pressure and possibly other problems. And so they, they feel quite debilitated and they feel like it's not something they can take on. So mm. you, in, in your experience, podcasting, doing your shows, have you had um, audience members like that? And do you have like success stories where they just come from such a low place? And, and 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 what in your experience is like what was the the progression that you would recommend for someone who who feels like afraid to walk they're at a point where they're afraid to walk uh i would say if they're afraid to walk get over that fear uh, and walk in a safe place meaning if if they're afraid something is going to happen to them um walk with someone okay right. but just just start and even if you could just walk down the block and back to start, yeah. that's a great, that is a great start because the effects of walking, it just, it will improve your health. It's just, that's the nature of it. Our bodies were meant to move and they were meant to move. I mean, we evolved to get up on two, two legs and the movement walking is what our primary way of your body moving. Will well remember the way to move yeah and and there's nothing to learn there's no learning curve with this um so if someone is feels debilitated and older and and afraid to walk just have someone with you yeah someone uh someone who uh, will encourage you and just stay with it because you'll you'll quickly see those benefits even if it's just that walk down the block because it's an, an accomplishment to get to the a little bit further each time and there's nothing wrong with getting a walker with wheels and doing your walk. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with getting a couple of mm-hmm. see what they call polling, where they put a mm-hmm. like a skiing pole in each hand for extra stability. There's nothing wrong with that. No one's going to make fun of you. No, no, not only the fact that you met you. You mentioned the walker with wheels. So my dad is 82 years old. Um, he had just is in June his 82nd birthday. We had Father's Day right after that. Two days later, he's in the hospital. Yeah, uh, he's rushed to the hospital. Um, what he had told me later was he couldn't breathe. He called. Um, he had the. He didn't call nine one one. He called the police department. He knew that number. Right. Last thing he remembers is a police officer at the door, and then he was in his kitchen trying to catch his breath. He went down. That's it. Yeah. I get to the hospital with my sister. Right, we get the call and. I figured out he's going to be laying in bed and just say, I wasn't feeling good or whatever. He's intubated and he's out. I have no idea if he's coming out of this. Yeah. Thankfully, he did initially. I thought it was COPD because he's a heavy smoker. Turns out it was a heart attack, but he had no pain. It was really weird. Um, uh, Quadruple bypass, all the recovery. He's doing great now. And he now walks with the walker on wheels. Okay. He finds... He finds he could walk without it right now, but he finds the comfort in having that. He right. said, I like to walk with this. I just to know. And then he could just turn around and sit down on it. He's walking more now at 82 after quadruple bypass than I could ever get him to walk in all the years since he retired. He's been retired about 15 years. And I would say, you need to walk more. And he would say, oh, my legs always hurt. My legs hurt. My legs hurt. Yeah. It came down to all of the, the smoking and, and the, the lack of circulation. So he, I mean, it's um, miraculous, I think, how well he's doing right now with physical therapy and every day he's walking. I spoke to him right before we got on the phone. And he's like, yeah, it's down in Edgewater and I'm walking longer every day. So 
you could go from being out in the hospital, induced, yeah. uh, you know, coma to that was June and we're in September now and he's out walking and he looks great. He looks better than he has in years. So, you know, you can go from right, you know, right at the death door to recover and, you know, really lead a fulfilling, healthy life. My, uh, my mother-in-law during the pandemic, and, she, and she's very much, you know, if the government says stay indoors, she will stay indoors and follow all the advice. And so she was denied her ability to go to her dance class. And, mm. and so she ended up literally just walking around her banister in her own house, you know, 40 minutes a day. Wow. She just put on the stereo. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's an option for some people who are, maybe you don't live in a neighborhood where you feel safe. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you really want to get it, you can, you can listen to your 75 ideas and make your own treadmill in a, in a house where you feel yeah. safe, where you have your phone nearby. You can call for help if you're worried mm-hmm. about your heart going off. Right. Exactly. I mean, there's, if, if you really think about it, I, I know there's people, no, you're done. I get it. I get there's people in that boat. But I think you'll be surprised once you start where where you can come back to. Oh, I, I, I agree. And I, like, I would point to my dad as a prime example of that. Absolutely. And again, heavy smoker, um, just always coughing and always having breathing issues and not, you know, take, we, we'd go see my nephew play football and it was, you know, to get from the stands to the parking lot at the end of the end zone was two stops because he had to catch his breath and my legs hurt. Now he's, you know, d- doing amazing. So and it's great the power, power of walking uh, for sure. Yeah. And for the lower circulation, like I have a desk job and before my condition, I mean, I, just above my socks, you can see where the swelling built up. Mm. So I didn't want to walk because my legs hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And within about a month of starting walking, all that went away. Isn't I hadn't it, had edema since. Isn't that amazing? Right? Yeah. Just, and it only took about a month of just that regular daily get out of the chair. Like the chair is, it's, it's, it's almost strangling your legs. The, the issues, whenever I have issues, uh, not with walking, whenever I have health issues, it's in my legs. It's my calves because now school started. I'm teaching again. And I'm sitting a lot preparing lessons and the night before getting ready. And it's too much, too much sitting at meetings and stuff like yeah. that. That really tightens up, um, tightens up my legs. Um, the calves act like a pump to pump the blood back up. That's and, right. Uh, what do they call it? A venous pump. Yeah, and, right. yeah. and you need to, you need to move. You need to walk to activate that. Yeah. And just sitting all the time is really, uh, sitting is awful. And, Sitting is what really I think contributed to my herniated disc as much as anything that I the running I did. It just I get back, flop down on the couch, and you know everything would tighten up in the position I was laying, which was it was sitting, which you know watching a ball game and leaning over here, just oh it, it wreaked havoc on my body. Yeah, and I mean like I have this sit stand s that rises up. I, I'm standing is, right now. Yeah, my work will get so busy I'll just get lost in it. Yeah, yeah. And then four hours went by and mm-hmm. I haven't left the chair. Mm-hmm. And now I notice, oh, my legs feel terrible. Mm-hmm. And I'll just, I'll just, at that point, I'm like, I have to go for a walk. Now I can't just stand now for half an hour. I have to go for a walk and cure mm-hmm. the damage I just did to my legs. I like, I like that word you used, cure. Yeah. Because, because it, it is a cure for so many ills that we have. And it's so, it's so, it's inexpensive. It's a good, you should have a decent pair of shoes so your feet, uh, you know, are comfortable. That's all you need. You just get out, get out, and move. So I actually had that. That reminds me. I went out to buy walking shoes. Okay. Because um, the amount of running I worked up to was starting to work against me. Okay. Like you said, you sort of dread the last mile, and and the next day my legs are too sore to want to run again. Yet I have the urge to exercise. So I partly resolved that by buying an exercise bike because I don't have the pounding. Mm-hmm. But also I'm I'm going to get a set of walking shoes because I love walking in the fall. I love walking when when it's getting dark. And I'm like, just give us some basic advice on how to pick a decent walking shoe because I know when I walk in my running shoes, my legs are quite sore afterwards. Okay. So I feel like there's 
there was there, there, the there's there okay so here's the difference in the walking and running shoes so when i started walking exclusively i would use my running shoes because i had just bought a new pair right and and i didn't think there was any difference so i was doing research for my first book walking for health and fitness and i'm and i'm like you know let me see about shoes so i said well i'll have to buy a pair just to compare and the difference is the walking shoes are so much lighter and they support the feet a little bit differently than running shoes so for example when you run and if you run um let's say like a marathoner all right top level runner but they spend a lot of time in the air they're actually bounding from there's times when they both feet are off the ground as a runner they right. design running shoes to really take a pounding so they're heavier they're stiffer i bought the walking well, shoes sorry isn't that the kind of the definition of the difference between a walk and a run is that some point both feet are off the ground yes like if yes. you watch race walking there has to be one foot on the ground on the, exactly right yeah. so running you're off the ground and that's why the the sneakers take such a pounding and your body takes such a pounding so i bought the walking shoes and i put them on i'm like wow they, they felt like uh they felt like slippers i mean they were so light i'm yeah. like all right i'll try these out and oh my god so i started walking with them and then after about two weeks i'm like let me try those running shoes again and I felt like, uh, remember the old character Herman Munster from the Monsters? He had those big shoes. <laughs> now, these are running shoes that I had always no used. And I'm like, they feel like so bulky and, and big. So there is this, this, a specific running shoe. I use New Balance. I've always used them. Um, I like them because they came. They come in a wide size. Now, maybe so other for shoes. For walking or running, sorry. Uh, for, uh, for walking. They, they have okay. running shoes. They also have a whole section for walking shoes. Okay. And, and I like um, I like the... Um, I've always used New Balance. There's a store not far from me, so that's I'm partial to their shoe. Yeah. Uh, what one thing I found with shoes, even running and walking shoes, that the the companies change over their styles so quickly that if you find a comfortable pair, buy another one because the next time you go to buy them, they're they're oh, out. We don't we don't carry that anymore. Here's the new model, and I'm like, the, that model was great. Yeah. Like, you know, so what I usually do is I'll buy a pair. Once I like them, I'll either go back to New Balance or I'll look for a deal online and same size, same color, everything, and get that second pair before, okay, style switch. And now I've got to try a new shoe that, you know, when the other one was so comfortable. Right. You know? But a walking shoe, definitely, if you're a walker, really worth the investment for sure. Okay. And, and the, the price is very, it's the same price as the running. It might even be a little bit cheaper than a good running shoe. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. You Cause, uh, that. you know, people, uh, I, I call it the Fitbit phenomena. They go buy a Fitbit and they're just going to come right out of the gate and do 10,000 steps a day, just from, from couch potato, 10,000 steps a day immediately. Yeah. And within three days they are all sore and seized up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. a good, what's a good progression for the couch potato? Let's say couch potato to a 5K walk. Like what? Okay, really? so couch potato 5K would be three uh, 3.1 miles. Yeah. I, I would say walk, you know, walk comfortably. But um, that first walk, you, you, you feel good. Like the first workout, hey, I could do more. This is great. I would, yeah. I would probably set a timer. Look to walk 25 minutes maybe just as a start, if you can get that far. But I right. wouldn't overdo it the first time. Again, just to avoid the soreness issue. And then, you know, the soreness leads to, oh, God, I don't like doing this. Although there's not a, I, I've never found, maybe because I've kind of always been in shape, but I've never found too much soreness with walking. Um, but I, I would say, and what I tell people is just, just listen to your body. So if you're feeling sore um, or if you feel you're overdoing it, just stop for a little bit. Like take a, take a day's rest. It's okay. I, uh, I have a program, and you ask about um, success stories. So I have a program called Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises, and it's basically combining walking and then sets of push-ups, lunges, squats, and planks that you can do right at a track, on the road. I mean, I do them uh, through my neighborhood. So I have a guy from California, Robert Boggs, who is in his, he's in his 80s, and he always sends me these great – every once in a while, I'll get an email from him and how he's doing. And he had health issues beforehand. He was getting into shape and he found my program and he was faithfully doing it and he was doing it every day. And he, and he like, he finally wrote me and it's like, 
do I have to do this every day? And I'm like, oh, Robert, no, you have to listen to your body. You know, so he, he cut it back to three days a week. And now he just, he just does the walking and the push-ups. But uh, listen to your body uh, when you first start. And you know, that, that's really, if, you know, you know, every, every individual listening knows their own body. So to give a, a set number, I would say do a little less is more. How's that? Do a little less than you think you can do so that yeah. you avoid the issues of soreness and you know, burnout or whatever. It's, it's more it's more how you accumulate it over a week rather than those one big session, right? Like uh, if you can go out and do a half hour today and tomorrow you feel just fine, obviously you could go 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, exactly. and the next day, if you're feeling a little sore, well, now, now, you know where you're at. Mm -hmm. and, and then you just, just, just yeah, just cut back from there. And again, you know, listen, listen to your body. I mean, there are times I walk two, three days in a row. And then that next day, especially now with the school starting back up, my body just feels tired. And I'll say, yeah. all right, you know, no walking today. I'll do something else because, you know, I'd rather feel fresh for the next time I get out there. Now, as a teacher, being on your feet all day, I got to think the walking just helps. Yeah, the walking helps with uh, dealing with uh, the frustrations of the classroom. Actually, it's not even the kids; it's the technology I have to deal with. Uh, oh. But <laughs> the kids are the kids have been great. But yeah, <coughs> excuse me. The walking again, it more more for the mindset for me than the uh, than physically. I mean, right now, physically, I feel great. Walking contributes to that. I just love the mindset part of it. Um, in fact, there's a, one block a day usually that I have free where, you know, it's prepped to prepare for a class, but I have everything done. I'll walk out of the building for, you know, 20 minutes down the street, 20 minutes yeah. back. And I almost feel like I broke the day up into, you know, I have a part-time job in the morning and a part-time job in the afternoon, even though it's the same job. Yeah. You know? And it just provides that, break in the day just mentally that is just it's it's a wonderful feeling you know and if so if you're someone who's not a walker try this someone who's not feeling good right now uh with life situation circumstances get out for a walk and and you know maybe you your mental state will lighten up just a little bit a little bit at a time you'll feel you'll feel better what's your what's your opinion on you know there's this approach where it's better to walk, You ha let's say you're doing three meals a day. It's better to walk 10 minutes after each meal than one 30-minute session. Uh, I, I don't know. No, I don't think it matters. I, I wrote, um, I have a blog post, um, the benefits of a 15-minute walk. Because as we're busy, I remember when my son was young, I mean, just to schedule time to do that longer run at the time when I was a runner took a lot of effort. But I suggest, and what I recommend is, Break your day up into 15 minutes. You can, I commute to work. I can mm -hmm. get there 15 minutes earlier and do that walk, you know. Um, lunchtime, instead of sitting and BSing with my colleagues, I can get out and do a, a walk. Anybody can do that. All right. During, during, well, during the school day, when, when I'm in the in session, I have to be in the classroom, obviously. But there are times where I'm not in the session. I can't get outside. I do a I do a loop around my building that takes about within the building, down to the main office, check the mailbox, walk around the auditorium, and you know, the great thing about doing that is you run into people that you don't or walk into people that you don't I don't normally see throughout the course of our day. Yeah. So the socializing's there, and then just you know talking about different issues that might not come up. You know, I I, I helped. Um, there were some teachers on duty. They needed help with something right at that time. Now, had it had it been walking, I wouldn't have, you know, no one would have been there to help them out. So, you know, you can you can find ways within your workspace to fit in a walk. Uh, you know, even if it's just let me get to the bathroom and back into the water cooler and you know, back and it's, forth. It's it's more. It's, I mean, just to get a couple <laughs> short walks in, it it seems to me, and if I sound judgmental, too freaking bad. Yeah. But the reality is most of us can squeeze that in, but it comes time to do it and we give ourselves just a reason not to, or mm -hmm. there's some sort of, uh, oh, you know, like, I'm not sure where I put my uh, my heavier shoes and there's a bit of snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'll just skip it today. And it's that, yeah. oh, no one says, well, I'm not going to walk. They say, I'll walk. I'll just do that later. And then you get into this 
So how what's what's a good tip just to make yourself start doing it? You, you know, um, well, you talk about getting stuck at like you're at your desk and work flows in and all of a sudden it's four hours later. Have a little timer every 20 minutes set to just even just to stand up. Even if you can't walk, right? And for yourself, man, just <clears throat> timer goes off. Let me just stand up, stretch my legs in place. I mean, I'm standing as we're doing this interview and then right. sit back down. That's one thing. But I would say. Hey, I gotta say, you're energy. You're just moving around. I, I know. I know. <laughs> like, but you it, have it the comes, energy it, to give. It comes down to this. This is what I think. We sometimes, um, like if you're in business, you set goals for your sales. You got to have this many sales. If you want to stay in shape, you need a fitness goal. Just as much as goal and any other goal in your life. And I think if you have, a, a, and especially now, if you have a health issue, your goal is to stay, to stay healthy. And yeah. so as far as having like accountability for yourself, it's, I think that's so important to have a goal. And even if and a fitness goal, because again, it'll keep you healthy. So a fitness goal for someone who's you know never thought about a fitness goal, maybe it's it's to do that ten thousand steps or to work up to that ten thousand steps and reward yourself when you do that. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's set aside time that you wouldn't ordinarily do. I mean, I love going to a coffee shop to work. That to me, I like to build time like save time other areas so I have the time to go and get some work done but have a nice cup of coffee in a nice atmosphere. So if I can encourage anyone to set a fitness goal for themselves, and, and since we're talking about walking, set a steps goal. And at 10,000, it doesn't have to hit 10,000. That, that was a number that sounds big. It sounds nice. Um, it's just whatever works for you. But oh, It's a marketing number. It's a nice yeah. number for commercials. And hey, you know, you, you should do 10,000 steps a day and we'll count it for you. Yeah, right. Like exactly. It's a nice round number. For exactly. Yeah. And, 10,000 steps a day is a lot. I mean, I walk a lot and I, I've, I've looked at, um, you know, my, my app, uh, my Apple app has was the steps. Yeah. And so yesterday I went out for a long walk cause I had the time, but the three days before that, just so busy other than walking around through school and, and the little, I'm, I didn't hit 10,000, but you know what? I, there were times when I walked, did the loop around inside my school. And so like 10,000 steps is actually quite a journey. That's, that's, that's about five miles. I mean, yeah. think about that. That's a, that's a, for, for anyone, that's a good walk. I mean, yeah, I, five I, miles, it sounds right. Yeah. yeah. And I did five, uh, yesterday I did a five mile walk and afterwards I felt, I, I felt good. I also felt tired, you know, yeah. uh, I felt tired. And if, if, if you're also, if you're 300 pounds compared to 150 pounds, mm. it's right. 10,000 steps versus 5,000. Right. I mean, do the math, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. So yeah, that 10,000, that's well, the marketing number, I would say, but to hold yourself accountable, have some kind of fitness goal, the, you, to fit your fitness and, and your health, that's, that's all you, you have control over that and as much as you can control it. And, you know, keep that in mind, set that goal, whatever that is, that might be the thing that gets the person to change the shoes, to get outside for that 15, 20 minute walk, you know? Yeah. And once once you get in that habit of doing it, um, like I said, the physical part was great. I was I'm healthy again, but for me, it was the emotional uh, benefits of it. I mean, it lift, lifted me up out of a bit of a, a tough area, tough time in my life. And uh, I haven't looked back since, you know, and I have yeah. a lot of energy. I do the treadmill in the morning with some body weight exercises. You look healthy and happy. I got to say, you look healthy and happy. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I am. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I'm a fortunate man. I have a lot of good things going on in my life. So uh, I am a happy yeah. man. And walking is a major, I have, I have major areas in my life that I am happy with and walking is one. Frank, how, how can my audience uh, follow you and find you? And uh, if, if they want to just send you a note and hear back, what, what are the best sure. ways? So I have a website, walkingforhealthandfitness.com. Within there, there's a contact uh, I, I put contact us. It's really just me. But when I first set up the website, you know, I saw, oh, contact us. But it's contact. It's, uh, Leave room for growth. It's good. Yes, exactly. Uh, Frank at walkingforhealthandfitness.com. And then I have a YouTube channel, Walking for Health and Fitness, the podcast, Walking for Health and Fitness. Um, 
I've written four books. There's Walking for Health and Fitness was the first book. There's uh, Fitness Walking Bodyweight Exercises, uh, Walking Inspiration, which is a it's a quote book. It started as a quote book, but it meant it as I was doing it, it turned into a monthly, um, almost like every month you work on a different uh, piece of content as far as uh, January. What's your why? What's your why for doing anything? And that's a, the motivation question comes from that. Like, what's your why for physical activity? For for me, it was my back. For you, your heart. And that's a great motivator. The, the next month is setting goals. So the things that I just talked about is in walking inspiration. And then I did a walking log book that was last uh, November. And I looked, I wanted a log book, but I you didn't want to just, I didn't want to just have a book where, okay, I put in my time, I put in my distance and this is it. So every month, oh, I'm sorry, every week with the log book is I call the walking insight. And it covers just half a page of some kind of insight that I've come up with while I'm walking. And then there's a place to take notes underneath that. So that's I'm going a, that's to pump your logbook. I'm going to pump it because a little story about two years ago, I was rooting through my old things and I found my old weightlifting paper logbook. Mm -hmm. And it was the most satisfying thing to read back through that part of my life. Yeah, sure. It was just the most sad. And you can't get that from a phone app. No, no, you no. can't. You it's can't. just a, it's the most satisfying thing. Your handwritten notes, absolutely. And and there's a, there's actually, there aren't quotes, there are some quotes within the insights, but there's a space of words of wisdom and where I encourage the reader to put their, like what what inspiring thing did you come, um, come up with? Did you hear something? Did you come up with an idea? Put that in the logbook. And again, you'll look back on it years later and say, oh, well, look at that. Let's just do it. Uh, how about try it and find out? <laughs> try it and try, yeah. Try it and find try it. Out. Oh, you know, I like. I'm gonna let me write that down. I, I'm gonna use that for my students because I'm always encouraging yeah. them to try more things and and fail. Frank, thank you. Your your podcast is very warm and friendly. I'm sure your books are the same. I read some of the reviews. I haven't had a chance to read your book, but I see that it's on Kindle Prime. Mm -hmm. So if you're a member of that, you can read the first one, at least the first book for free. Yeah. In, yeah. in Canada. So mm -hmm. I'll probably be adding you to my library soon. And right. it's, it's a quick read. It's an, e it's an easy read. It was, I was, I was looking at walking books and I thought they all got lost in the weeds of like, like, why are they, why are they writing about this where yeah. I've been walking? And I think the most important thing is this. So as a high school teacher, <clears throat> excuse me. I need to get right to the point with the kids. So that's how I approach my books. I mean, just great. get right to the point and not a lot of fun. Well, we're all kids at heart here, so it's good. Very okay, I th I thank I, I, Frank, I thank you so much. You've been a great guest, very generous with your time, and um, I'm enjoying your content, and I encourage all my audience, go throw a, a like, subscribe. Frank's got a YouTube channel, and I'm going to link it all there. And uh, follow him along on YouTube. We're broken, it's tragic, we're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic, believe you could have it, and I know of sadness, the anxious in panic, the infinite vastness of all that